Welcome to a video on the op-amp differentiator. We will have a look at applications for the differentiator circuit, the derivation, then some practical implementations, and a simulation. Right, some applications for the differentiator. First, you can do some gradient measurements if you're using a differentiator because that is what differentiation does. It shows you the gradient of a signal. Right, so if you have triangular waves, the gradient of this will be represented in the voltage of a block wave. Okay. Also, you can do rising and falling edge detection. So if you insert a block wave, you get, will get out a positive or a negative spike. You can convert triangular waves to square waves. You can do sine to cosine conversion. So if you differentiate a sine wave, you get a cosine wave. And... I forgot to mention with a rising and falling edge detection is also why the differentiator is called the noise amplifier. So whenever you get this sharp increase in a signal, you will get a spike on the output. This is also why the amplifier is not commonly used is because of this noise amplification effect. And the last application is FM demodulation. So in the FM signal, the information sits in the frequency. So due to the chain rule, whenever you differentiate a signal like this, you will have the signal multiplied by the information signal as the output. So just by filtering you can recover the information that's sitting in the FM signal. Okay, so let's look at ideal differentiator. So basically it's a capacitor coupled into an op-amp and a resistor for feedback. So if we assume the op-amp is ideal follow Kirchhoff's current law and remember that the current in a capacitor is the change in voltage over the change in time we can get the current flowing and that is the current flowing here and then the resistor is V out minus this point over there Combine these two equations and we get that we have a time constant C1R1 multiplied by the change in voltage over the change in time. So we can rewrite it to this. So that is basically the gradient of a signal. And there we have a differentiator. Note that the output of this is inverted. So, yes, you will calculate the gradient then it's multiplied by the time constant which is in inverted commas the gain of the amplifier and it will be inverted okay so this c1r1 is typically the design that you will go to so the highest frequency in your circuit you will use the time constant of that and this will give you your 0 dB frequency or your crossing frequency. Okay, so let's look at both plots of the ideal versus actual differentiator. So differentiator is on a both plot a straight line in a plus that would be 1 over S. And this would continue up until infinity with a constant phase. Okay, so differentiation happens at 20 decibels per decade going up. 
But in a practical, the gain bandwidth product of your op amp and this line will intersect each other at some point and create this unstable or resonant frequency right here. Okay, so this system will become unstable in a practical system. So we don't get something like ideal frequencies. We need to counter this resonance with some practical circuits. So the best way is to, since this is a pole, is to place a zero at this resonant frequency or before this resonant frequency to stabilize this. Okay. So here is our differentiator still. The blue one is when we've just placed a zero. Okay, so at the resonant frequency, we place the zero and it flattens this out. And ideally, we can limit the gain at a certain point. And then we have this green signal right here and basically our differentiator becomes ideal just for a certain portion of this power plot okay we can still integrate here but our phase will not be the same so if the phase of the output does not bother you then you can continue up until this high point but if the phase is kind of an issue you are limited. Okay. So the implementations of a zero is if we place a capacitor in parallel with this resistor here, we basically create a low pass filter. So the same frequency uh, frequency equations for a low pass filter will be handy right here. Okay. So if you simulate the problem, you find the point where it's unstable, you place a pole, uh, sorry, a zero at that point, and you will stabilize your differentiator. To stabilize the gain, we add a resistor here on the input, and this resistance is typically really, really small. Okay, so a couple of ohms, not kilo ohms like we are used to for amplifiers. So, and then with that we can limit our gain. And also remember that for non-ideal amplifiers we need to compensate for the offsets. So let's look at the design. I set up a signal and we need to differentiate the signal. So, the fastest moving part of the signal is right here between 13 and 0 0.14, 0 0.13 and 0 0.14 seconds. Okay, so that is where we will determine our time constant. So, for 0 0.01 seconds, or a 0 dB frequency of 16 Hz. That is what we design for. Okay, that is typical what you will look for in the signal is the fastest moving part. Right. This will ensure that the gain in inverted commas is not too high. Okay, so the time constant is C1R1. And you can just pick a capacitor and the resistor to go with that. So you will find that you will have extremely large capacitors in the differentiator. Okay, so that is the first part of the design done. This is the differentiator itself. Then the things to help out. R1 and R2 should be the same size. To counter any offsets and then I want the gain limited at 48 dB so with a 10k that would be a 39 ohm resistor 
and in a simulation I found that the resonant frequency is at 7.3 kilohertz and to counter that add a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor. Okay, so this is the circuit that you need to simulate to see if it differentiates the signal and see what it does at the places where we have discontinuities. Okay, so if you want to see what this output looks like before simulating it, we can differentiate the signal by parts. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So if you break this signal up, we have different slopes, M1 to M8. M1 is all the places where we have flat bits, because the gradients at these parts are exactly the same. The gradient of a constant is zero. Okay, so the output signal at all these positions will be zero. So we are more interested in all the other spots. Okay, so the gradient of M2 is the change in time and the change in voltage. So the change in time is 0 0.02 seconds and the change in voltage is 2 volts. So if we divide that, we get a gradient of 100. Okay, same for M3, the change in voltage and the change in time. So the change in voltage is minus 2 and the change in time is 0 0.02. So that gives us minus 100. Okay, so we can do this for every part of a signal. We can do this for M4. We can do this for M5. M5, a change happens in 0 0.01 seconds, and the change is 6 volts. So it goes from minus 5 to 1. So that is a 6 volt change. Okay, so that would give us a change of 600. Right, so you can calculate the slopes of each one of these points. And it becomes kind of boring after a while. Um, I gave many slopes so that you can have more practice. The interesting ones is M7 and M8. So, whenever you differentiate the discontinuity, you will go to infinite. Okay, so this differentiating will provide us with positive infinite. And differentiating this, since it's going down, will give us negative infinite. So this will spike upwards, and this will spike downwards. Okay. So with that, we have all our slopes calculated. Now we can calculate the output voltage. Now, the voltage that you calculate will be for the duration of M1, or the duration of M2. So, in the differentiation equation, we had minus our time constant. So our gain in inverted commas that we're multiplying with is minus 0 0.01 seconds. So having the seconds, they will cancel and we will only have a voltage left. So if we multiply 100 by minus 0 0.01, our output will be minus 1 volt. So for the duration of M2, our output will be minus 1 volt until we hit M1, and we'll go back. For M3, we will have a 1 volt output. For M4, 
we will have a 1.67 volt output. Okay, so here it will go up to here, and for the duration of it will be up there. Okay, so the voltage that you calculate here is the voltage for the entire time that you have this specific slope. So if you put the ADC on this, you can determine the slope of the signal. Okay, now multiplying infinite with a time constant of any sort will still provide infinite, but it will be inverted. And basically on the amplifier, this will go to saturation of the amplifier. So we're using the TL074, so that is 2 volt saturation. So with 10 volt sources, that will be 8 volts, plus minus 8 volts. Okay. So hooking up a comparator to an output like this, you can have rising and falling edge detection. Okay. Here is the output signal plotted nicely, not hand drawn. And you can see what it looks like in its final form. So let's jump into simulation and see if this is what we're getting out. And we will also check out the boat plots for our design. So I set up our differentiator and then the two practical cases. So we improved with a zero added and then with a gain limiting. So let's start off by checking out the boat plots. Okay, so if we run the boat plot on the first one and open a cursor, if we go here to the 0 dB point, we will see that we do have our 16 Hertz as designed. But up here, you can see that we have a phase being constant and then the phase suddenly changes and we have this resonant peak and this happens at 7.3 kilohertz so that is why we need to add that zero in okay so let's add the boat plot with a zero so we can see that our Bottom half here is still the same, but our resonance has now disappeared. So this line is kind of extended a bit up to here, and we can see that our phase really starts to become an issue around here. Okay, so the general point is we want to extend this line as far as possible to have a perfect differentiator. Okay, this one we've added zero already is all already looking kind of nice. Let's add our gain limiting. And now we can see how our gain has been limited and all is well and good in this differentiator. All right. Now it won't become unstable no matter what we do to it. Let's go and have a look at the time based simulations. So in a file I created the signal and there's the signal that we had in the presentation. So what will happen if we put this through a perfect integrator? Ooh, noise. Okay, so we can see that it tries to provide the block waves that we have, but there is a lot of noise sitting on it. So this thing is basically oscillating. So this is why we have this pole here. And if you go and have a look, most of these oscillations will be at 7. 0.3 kilohertz. So if we have a look here at our um, 
where we added our zero, you will see that we have a minus one volt output, a one volt output, and it is following the curve that we calculated during the problems. And you can see that we have our rising and falling edge detection here, and our amplifier is going to saturation. So this is the the spikes. You'll also notice that there is some spikes where we have any crossings here. With a gain limiting, that will disappear. Okay, and there is our gain limited version of output. That is the differentiator and the many purposes that you can get for it. Input signal versus output signal. Thank you for watching. And see you in the next video.